Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We are so excited to bring you a really um, great event today. I'm Megan Mance with the Homeland Security Dialogue Forum, and HSDF has been around since 2003 to foster communication and collaboration between the public and private sectors on a range of security issues. And so for the past two years, um, HSDF has been partnering with the Center for Public Policy Innovation on a series of events to explore um, IT modernization efforts across the government. And you'll be hearing from my colleague, Chris Wong uh, with CPPI a little bit later on in the program. And so we're delighted to bring you today an excellent program in hybrid cloud and how it delivers capability to federal agencies and some of the remaining security challenges. So uh, we hope that you'll leave today leaving much more, feeling much more informed and confident on uh, this particular set of issues. And I do want to extend a special thanks to our event partners, uh, Dell Technologies, Kerasoft, uh, Google Cloud, McAfee, and Oracle. And um, just a couple of quick housekeeping items to get us started today. Um, so you should have received a link to our briefing book and the event reminder that went around. And that's where you'll find uh, the agenda for today, all of the speaker bios, and some other helpful resources. And so uh, you may have noticed that attendees do not have video or audio enabled right now. And we intend to keep it that way during the event, but we do want to encourage audience engagement through the use of polls and uh, the Q&A function. So uh, we'll have a few polls popping up throughout the program and um, you can submit your responses to the polls, which will all be anonymous. And you can also use uh, the Q&A feature to submit any questions that you have uh, for our speakers. Um, so today's event is completely live. Uh, nothing has been pre-recorded. And while we don't anticipate any technical issues, uh, we do appreciate your patience, especially with a couple of the transitions. Um, so we have over 350 people registered to attend today's webinar, and we're just so glad to see the interest, the interest from both um, industry and government groups. Um, so I do want to mention also we have not invited any media to this event, and we'd like to keep the conversation off the record. So we ask that you uh, please respect that. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first keynote speaker today, uh, Mr. Grant Schneider. I think uh, many of you are familiar with Mr. Schneider. He serves as the Federal Chief Information Security Officer in the Office of Management and Budget. And in this role, he leads a team of experts to develop uh, cross-cutting policies to enhance cybersecurity across federal agencies. And he's been very much focused on three major buckets, enhancing the defensive posture of agencies, uh, leveraging government-wide capabilities to mitigate threats, and um, improving information sharing and incident response. Um, in 2015, Mr. Schneider played a pivotal role in the government response to the OPM cybersecurity breach. And he's held other positions in the White House as cybersecurity advisor to the federal CIO. And prior to that, he was um, the CIO for the Defense Intelligence Agency. Uh, so Mr. Schneider, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we really look forward to your keynote remarks. and hearing your perspective on hybrid cloud policy and how we can collectively work together to enhance security. Great, Megan, uh, thank you very much for the introduction and thanks to you and Kate for, uh, for hosting today's event. Um, I am <clears throat> pleased to be with all of you today, although I have not yet gotten used to just staring at myself and talking. Um, I definitely am looking forward to when we can get back to having um, audiences and, and be in the same room, but uh, we are certainly not at that point yet. Um, I, so I, I want to touch on you know, today's topic, securing the hybrid cloud environment. Um, this is a really important topic. I think it's very timely. Um, you know, as far as you know, when we look at federal agencies, um, we are all live in hybrid environments, right? We have some on-prem capabilities. We have all of our agencies have some cloud capabilities. They usually have two or three different types of cloud capabilities. And so the fact that we're in this hybrid environment definitely adds to the challenges that come along with securing that environment. And so one of the things that, uh, sorry, um, one of the things that, that when we look at that, 
uh, we have to be able to be sure that we've got the situational awareness that we need. Um, and so I want to talk through some of the things that we do from our organization, from an OMB perspective, to help agencies move in that direction. Because as we have reached out and continue to kind of change the shape of our enterprises and our architectures, as we add these um, leveraging more shared services, leveraging more cloud services, we're increasing our threat surface, right? And at the same time, we're increasing our threat surface and changing our threat surface. Uh, we also have malicious actors who are looking for ways to further either their policy outcomes or their economic um, gains through malicious cyber activity. And, and certainly, as we've seen during this national pandemic, a massive shift to telework across government, across <clears throat> industry, um, across education, you know, all of us in both our personal and professional lives, this has been a significant shift. It has certainly created some seams um, in our security posture and seams that adversaries are going to try to uh, take advantage of. And so when we, when we look at what my organization does inside of the Office of Management and Budget, and if you read the Federal Information Security Modernization Act of 2014, which is relatively accessible as laws go and, and being readable, um, the OMB director is really charged with, with a number of things if you look in there um, in, in the legislation, but I think it boils down to about three main elements. And as the Federal Chief Information Security Officer, you know, my myself and my team really implement those on the director's behalf. And first and foremost is developing and overseeing the implementation or adoption of cybersecurity policies. So setting policies for agencies to follow um, that outline what steps they need to take in order to secure their environments, whether it's their on-prem environment, their cloud environment, or the reality is the hybrid environment that, that they are all uh, living and operating in. And quite frankly, we expect to continue to be living and operating in. Um, you know, the government, uh, you know, we tend to own one of everything, um, and therefore we have to secure all of those environments. So basically setting those policies and working closely with agencies to be sure that they adopt and actually implement those policies. Um, role one uh, for our team. Role two for our team is ensuring that agencies are protecting federal data and federal um, information systems commensurate with the potential risk of harm from a compromise. So what does that really mean? Risk management. Right, making sure and laying the groundwork work for agencies to take a risk management approach to how they are securing their environments. For, as far as how do they determine what is most critical? So we provide um, policies such as the high value asset policy that helps agencies as they work to identify their most critical assets so that they can secure them appropriately and identify the, the least critical assets so they're investing the appropriate amount of money and security resources into them. And then the third piece is um, ensuring that federal agencies are complying with any government-wide cybersecurity requirements. And so those could be laws, legislation, um, they could be uh, OMB memos, M memo policies that we put out, they could be binding operational directives from the Department of Homeland Security, or they could be standards and guidance from the National Institute of Standards and Technology inside of the Department of Commerce. And so making sure that agencies are, are implementing everything or complying with everything everything, which, you know, compliance gets a bad rap inside of cybersecurity. I really view the compliance as, you know, necessary, but not sufficient. So whenever we can have a compliance checklist, um, that's great. However, that doesn't really get us to the security piece. So when we talk about managing um, agencies' involvements and really measuring their results, um, you know, we take what's in the FISMA legislation, we couple that with our cross-agency priority goals through the president's management agenda and really use those to oversee what agencies are doing and, and indeed to help them make this risk management decisions in their environment. And so when we look at putting policies out, you know, one of the things that we have to balance along those lines is making sure that we are putting policies out that balance the need to be as specific as possible so agencies know what they need to do 
and yet are broad and flexible enough because every one of our agencies looks a little different, operates a little different, um, has a different architecture. And, and so, you know, we are looking for what is always the right balance of, you know, giving them as much guidance as possible and giving them the flexibility because, you know, as, as we start to look at everyone having a different environment and everyone's shift to, to the cloud and everyone's shift and to the cloud in different ways and to different degrees, we really need agencies to have that flexibility. Um, at the same time, we want agencies to modernize, right? We have been very focused on IT modernization, and that includes rapid shifting to cloud environments to you know, decrease long-term costs uh, and certainly long-term capital expenditures and shifts towards uh, shared services. And, and those both bring in a level of complexity um, that some of our old policies didn't quite handle. And so you've seen us provide updates across our trusted internet connection policies, across our identity policies. I mentioned high value asset policies. Um, and we also updated our cloud uh, policy from a cloud first uh, approach to a cloud smart approach uh, last year. And there were really three things that, uh, three key elements that I wanna touch on from for us today on the, the cloud environment or the, the cloud smart and approach and environment. First and foremost is um, security and really moving to a security environment um, that has the flexibility and shifts from you know, a perimeter security. We still need to do perimeter security. I don't think perimeters are gonna go away per se, but they've radically shifted as we move towards mobile solutions and mobile capabilities and cloud capabilities. And so we need to shift our security posture to be really be about the data and you know, providing the security for the data, where the data is at, um, and kind of meeting it on its own terms. And so, you know, inside of that, that policy, we think we provide the flexibility and really the drive to get agencies there. Um, secondly, is around the identity of who and what is operating on our on our tools and on our capabilities and our systems, both as as either machines, as people, as tools, as individuals. You know, what does that look like? How can we be certain of who is operating and what they are doing? Because a malicious outsider looks like an insider on day one, right? As soon as they get in, they they start to look like they they get real credentials or valid credentials, and they start to look like an insider. So we need to know what what everyone is doing and what normal looks like. And when we have shifts like we've had this year to massive telework, we need to rebaseline what normal looks like so we continue to search for those anomalies. And then we're also working closely with agencies on how we develop that workforce, right? Um, you know, two years ago, the president signed an American, the American Cybersecurity Workforce Executive Order um, that talks about how we ensure we've got the workforce we need inside the federal government, um, as well as the workforce we need across the, the nation. And, and you know, that really falls into a couple areas. Um, one is reskilling. So how do we get people into you know, the key roles around cloud security, around IT modernization, um, around cyber, how do we get people who are familiar with the government, already in the government, know how it works, are passionate about their service, and, and get them into some of the, the places where we have more needs. So reskilling is a piece of that. How do we recruit? How do we recruit more people into the into the government um, to, to support? And even the people, and then how do we train those folks while they're in the government? And even the people that we lose from the government that go out into industry, you know, they're still part of the security ecosystem, whether they're working for industry or they're working in the government and, and helping to enhance the security of our nation um, as a whole. So, you know, from a securing that the hybrid cloud environment, you know, our role is to provide the flexibility. Um, at every agency, it becomes an individualized approach to that risk management solution um, and making sure that, that they are balancing what they need. Um, and then we're really just working with them to be sure that if they need support from another agency that's already solved one of the, the problems or challenges they're facing, or they need technical assistance from the Department of Homeland Security or someone else that we can bring those in, but really create a partnership um, to be sure we secure that environment. So uh, I think you guys have a great program set up for today. Uh, I look forward to hearing it and hearing about all the feedback that comes out of the dialogue. And uh, um, Kate and Megan, I wanna turn back to you.
back to you, Megan, since you showed up on the screen. And uh, thank you again for the opportunity to, to speak to everyone today. Great. Well, thanks, Mr. Schneider. We really appreciate it. And I think you teed up a lot of excellent uh, topics that we're going to delve into in a little more detail with our panels. So really appreciate you being here today. And um, 